As grids evolve, digital substations and smarter network technologies are becoming the backbone of the energy transition. These innovations aren't just concepts, they're already proving their value in the field. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Joining us today are David Aukerman, Global Market Director for Energy at Westermo Network Technologies, and Anton Krupski, Vice President for Digital Substations at Wellitech, to share how their companies are shaping the grid of tomorrow and what's ahead at SGT26 in Paris. Okay, well, welcome, David. Welcome, Anton. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Great to have you. Thank you very much, Madonna. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Fantastic. Well, before we dive into some of the detail here, there's been a re some recent activity um, at Westermo. Westermo, I believe, has recently acquired Wellatech, uh, which has brought new opportunities to the market in terms of new products and services. Um, explain to our viewers, um, you know, what were the drivers for this acquisition and how it's going to benefit the energy transition. Thank you, Mandana. Um, the acquisition of Velotech is, um, is a strategic uh, move for, for uh, Westermo. I mean, we have been long time in, in the communication portfolio, mission critical communications, but we see uh, an increasing need for, for compute power in this uh, domain as well. So it was a natural um, partnership for us to, to, to join forces with, with Velotech that has a very nice complementary offering to, to the Westermo offering. If Westermo were looking into expanding their networking portfolio with uh, also other equipment, we as Velotech are manufacturer of computing hardware and especially if we're talking about grid modernization, we are manufacturing devices for primary substations that are tailor-made for primary substations. And we were exploring into how to expand our portfolio with networking equipment, even making first steps in this, um, um, in this direction. So we are also kind of happy about being acquired and being able to expand our portfolio. But what comes in addition to that is the global network of um, Vestimo around the globe with uh, a lot of local offices all around the globe. It gives us the opportunity to provide local support in native language in the business hours of our clients, which is uh, a great thing for us. Fantastic. So not only expansion of product portfolio, but also um, new territories that you're able to support, new customer groups and on a 24-7, um, 365 basis as well. Great. Fantastic. Now, it would be interesting to know in terms of the energy transition, what you consider be, to be some of the main challenges that utilities are facing right now and what solutions that your new combined uh, strengths can bring to the market. I mean... A lot of people talk about the, the challenges of the energy sector, and, and uh, I, I don't want to dive too hard into all of this, but there are many different topics that the, the grid operators and the energy producers of the, of the world face today. Uh, there are weakness in the grid, there are a higher need of resilience and, and, and taking care of their network. There is a uh, increasing demand of, of taking care of an aging and an more and more unfit uh, network. And there is a challenge for, for lack of finding the right people and the right skilled staff uh, into, this, uh, into this mix of, of uh, challenges. Um, there is, of course, the demand growth and the need for sustainability and, and, and the, the new threat vectors into cybersecurity as well. So there is a mix and plethora of, of different challenges for the, for the grid operators. And I would like to stop at that pos pos position and just say that on the, on the solution side, there are many, many, many solutions suggested, uh, so selected and implemented by the energy companies today. But the interesting fact, when you look at all of these solutions, that they rely on, on one key ingredient. They rely on communication, digitalization and compute power. Whatever sector, whatever need you're in, you need to have the really mission critical infrastructure for for communication and you need an and an growing um, capability in the compute side on substation level in the uh, grid edges in the consumer prosumer situation and also 
with the production facility. So the network has always been very interconnected, but that needs to be even better at, uh, at handling uh, shifting needs and uh, of, of uh, during the day and, and, and over the year from, from the grid operators and producers. So at the core of this, you have mission critical comms and compute power. Okay, great. In terms of connectivity, in terms of um, communication systems, what's on the horizon? What new technologies can uh, can utilities rely on for the future? One thing that we see is is the need for uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, computer-based uh, solutions inside substations. Uh, you have... Um, distributed applications and there is a need to be able to maintain it better over the years so looking at uh, ways of of um, uh, you um, uh, make the the installations younger and then that is that is a challenge uh, not only changing devices but also making smarter choices and make it more digital um, so from our perspective, having the, the proper communication devices and then offering what also Velotech brings to the table, the, the compute power. Yes, uh, thank you, David. So I totally agree with you. Maybe linking it to the first question from Andana regarding the energy transition and the reason why we will be digitizing more and bringing more computing technologies into the power grid is um, that if we take a look on the power grid and the substations of today, we see that uh, with the energy transition, transition, we're bringing a lot of renewable um, sources uh, into the grid. We bring a lot of electrical vehicles and heat pumps and other new components to the grid that um, make it much more flexible. And it's just impossible to imagine that we'll be able to handle this complexity uh, with utilizing conventional uh, substations. So this is the reason why the utilities are looking for solutions. And first of all, the software that will be able to manage this complexity. And um, each of these piece of um, software stack needs a hardware platform um, underneath. And when we're talking about the digitalization of substations, the cornerstone is the IEC 61850, and uh, it's all about communication. That's why I think if we bring it all together, adding the cybersecurity layer on top, it's uh, clear why um, very ruggedized and reliable hardware from, from Vestamo and Velotech is such a, a nice and perfect fit for uh, our utilities today. Right, okay. And so essentially we're talking about virtualized substations for the future, are we, in terms of the product suite you're offering? Yes. It's, um, it's a, a very a sort of popular topic at the moment. I think there's some anxiety amongst utilities about the migration path and the cost to achieve virtualization. What are your thoughts on that? Probably I would start then. So I, I think now it's not just a popular topic. And if you compare the current discussions on this topic to the to the ones that took place uh, two years ago, now it's just the central topic of all working groups uh, at IEC, SIGRE, there's a VPAC Alliance. There are also other organizations contributing to this topic. And we see that from just being curious about this topic, um, most of the utilities and vendors have discovered real benefits of this. And when we're talking about the costs, uh, I think it's uh, smart uh, to split it into several uh, parts and not just comparing the cost of um, the, the capex of, of it, because uh, I, for example, don't have exact numbers. I've only seen some researches on that and calculation from um, the system integrators. But I think what is necessary is that we compare uh, total cost of ownership, combining the capex, uh, the opex, um, the also the additional uh, challenges we are currently facing with uh, aging of manpower and the lack of knowledge and the complexity that I've already mentioned. And when we're talking about virtualized or software-defined substations, we can address each of these uh, crucial points and really bring new level of flexibility and functionalities that we couldn't uh, achieve with the conventional setups. So I believe when we're talking about the cost side of things, we should take this um, additional criteria into consideration, not only talking about the capex um, of uh, conventional and, and virtualized substations, not only comparing the opex where we already would see the uh, crucial advantages of um, software defined substations, but also um, considering this additional um, 
functions and flexibility that software defined substations are bringing, also addressing the challenges that I've mentioned. David, do you have something to add on that? I think you capture it pretty well. Uh, I, I, I would like to underline the, the um, uh, the savings on the OPEX side that you can do with a, with the virtualization and digitalization of substations where you move from the conventional way of working into a new digital era, and that will save uh, manpower. And that is a critical uh, asset for, for uh, the grid owners around the world. Uh, you also mentioned 61850 as being, um, you know, critical to the future digital substation. Um, I sense at the moment that many utilities are struggling with the larger scale implementation of this protocol. What are your thoughts about, you know, how the how the standards can be simplified in order to make it more accessible and more implementable for utilities? That is a, a great question. I mean, 6150 is really the enabler for the future. Uh, it, ha it is the first strong standardization that has happened in the in the energy field that really took away a lot of proprietary protocols and the dependence on, on the individual, let's say, vendors that you, you really uh, had to trust for, for a long time. The 61850 standard is, is very much alive and it's, it's being developed and, and moving forward. And as to how to, to start using it, there are many uh, good uh, uh, partners that you can work together with to, to get your own test systems that you can start to learn and work with it. And I would say the, the modern way of building a substation today with 61850, it is totally accepted and, and into the field and there, there shouldn't be any kind of issues to meet there. Of course, the virtualization, the digitalization, more on the process level, that is a next step where you have to work more and learn and, and build up your own know-how. But this plays very well into the field of finding new and younger resources into this area, because those people will also be trained and, and see the digital part as a more natural way of working. I, I totally agree with David, couldn't agree more. And um, I, I just recently got back from the IEC uh, uh, working group 10 of technical committee 57 back uh, when every single discussion uh, in, a, in a plenary or in the room of many experts is a, is a balance between how deep do we want to standardize things and how accessible the standard is gonna be in the end. So I believe it's always like, like a balancing between two of this um, uh, side of things. And uh, yes, I also would like to highlight the uh, um, importance of having right partners to guide you through this uh, path. And uh, there's always um, uh, a choice of how deep you wanna go into that and how fast you want to utilize 61850, whether you, um, you're you starting with uh, station bus, uh, station level applications or want to, uh, to utilize it on the process level. And um, also a question whether you want to build this know-how um, in-house or you uh, would probably better go with a partner that had already built hundreds or thousands of substations that are based on 61850. Um, but in the, in the internet or in the academic environment, there is a lot of materials on, uh, on the experience of utilities that are implementing process pass and recently there's been a, a brochure of Seagra where TSOs are sharing their knowledge and experience on process pass uh, implementation you see among all the benefits all the also all the concerns and and uh, maybe doubts they have so it's uh, it's not a uh, not an easy thing it's not a plug and play thing so you need to really invest uh, into that your your time your resources and make the strategic decision whether uh, in this moment of time this is something you really want to go in but um, considering all the benefits that it brings i think that um, all utilities were sooner or later come to this point. Well, thank you very much for your insights and your contribution today. Um, finally, you you will be joining us at SGT26 in Paris next year. I think uh, Westermo and Dwellatec have been uh, exhibiting for many years with us now. So we're delighted to have you back for 26. Um, can you give us a quick insight into what you'll be sharing and what you'll be displaying, how you'll be participating next year? Next year, we will... Uh, be 
also doing a demo besides the the normal showcase in the exhibition area. Uh, so we will have a demo area where, where customers and interested parties can come and see uh, the equipment and see configuration methods and how they can be connected. And we also have some uh, some live uh, demo together with our partners. Please, maybe Anton, you can tell us a little bit more about. Oh yes. <laughs> Yes, I'll be glad to do that. So still we have uh, some time to prepare ourselves. So we don't have a fixed uh, layout of what we exactly will be sharing, but it will be uh, based on a virtualization approach, definitely. So we'll uh, be showcasing a virtualized environment with some applications running uh, on, on our equipment and connected to um, so servers connected to the uh, switches um, with some uh, sample value stream injections and um, most probably a virtualized protection running on our devices. Um, maybe we'll, we'll want to add some cybersecurity tools on station level, other station level applications. So um, we're still very flexible. We're still in communication to our partners that also will be exhibiting as, uh, at SGT and will um, make sure that our demo will be as interesting as possible for everybody attending. Oh, that's fantastic. And participants can actually pre-schedule their meetings for your demo so that they get dedicated time one-on-one -on -one with you and they can answer their own very specific questions in a very private setting. Um, so we look forward to connecting you with many participants at SGT26. And thank you again for joining us today. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you next year. Yeah, look forward to it. Thank you very much, Madonna. Thank you. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and to follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for watching and listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.